Today on Cash vs Trash, midway through our journey, we're going to send both of the cars to the dyno to see how much power we've made. Recently, we modified our little hatchbacks using trash that we found in the scrap metal bin and cash to buy a really nice exhaust system out of Japan and in my case, recycle an old 3-inch exhaust and install it onto the Peugeot using a welder. We wanted to see what the results would be and the best way to do that is on a dyno. We also installed uh, a couple of intake systems. Now, Marty's one was made out of PVC downpipe and a cheap filter. Uh, I put on a K&N system which retails for $499 and we installed those on the car and we thought, you know what, considering we are moving towards a battle and of course it's power to weight, uh, we want to be making power, that's kind of why we're doing this, we thought we'd send both cars to the dyno and see how much power we've made. My Purge Bro is the first car on the dyno. With my custom made 180SX exhaust and my downpipe intake, I'm hoping to see some decent gains. In stock form, I made 72.3 kilowatts, so that's the number to beat. I've made 69 kilowatts at the front wheels. That's right, my DIY mods have cost me power. We're going to run it up again and confirm the result. I've spun up 70 kilowatts at the front wheels, a loss of 2.3 kilowatts compared to our stock run. Now it's time to load up my Suzuki Swift Sport, the only car here today with real performance modifications. 79.7 kilowatts is the number to be. Unlike the homebrew mods on the Peugeot, the Swift has known brands, an iconic Monster Sport exhaust system that is steeped in motorsport history, and a K&N intake that comes with a guarantee to increase horsepower and torque. This is it, it's time to run it up on the dyno. I've lost almost 7 kilowatts at the wheels, which is shocking to be honest, so we've decided to check over everything to make sure there aren't any significant problems. Give me a sec, let me see what I can do. The intake system is removed, the mass airflow sensor cleaned, and then reinstalled on the car. Now it's not likely that our freer flowing exhaust system has cut our power, so our suspicions are definitely with the intake. With everything reinstalled, it's time to run up another power figure on the dyno. I've lost 6.9 kilowatts at the wheels, which represents an almost 10% decrease in power compared to stock. So I'm not really in this competition to lose power. And so this here so far um, seems to have lost me a huge amount of power on the dyno. So I'm gonna take this out, take this out, stock intake for the win. So it turns out that a lot of you were right. You let me know in the comments that I wasn't gonna be making any power, but in fact, it's worse than that. I've managed to lose power and I just don't, I can't really comprehend why. I understand that it's contentious and stuff, but the box did say, I think that it was like guaranteed to increase horsepower. I think that's what it said. So what I'm really interested to know is if you know, or someone can tell me, under what conditions does that system guarantee you horsepower? Because I got the opposite effect and I would love to apply those conditions to make the power. What do I have to do to make the power that's advertised? Because I'm not getting it. So you probably saw from the Peugeot, the power was similar. I mean, a big enough percentage gap that you would start to ask questions, but I can put it down to, I only spent 50 bucks on intake and 50 bucks on an exhaust. If I have to sacrifice a couple of kilowatts for all that noise and the fun of it, then I would yeah, go, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm losing two or three kilowatts. Depends on the dyno, depends on the day, depends how far it is on the roller, depends how heavy your new wheels and tires are. All these things can come into it, but I didn't see a drastic drop. Mm. In the case of the Swift, 
you have to ask and go, hang on, not enough of the other stuff was really changed. You, yeah. you know, changed weight in a big way or anything else that would, that would sort of come into it. Except that, and experts have kind of agreed with this too, as we've asked them over the, over the years, are you actually optimising the engine to use the extra air? You, you may have made extra air available. Yeah. Maybe it's colder, maybe it's not. Can you actually use it? Can you actually add the fuel and make a bigger bang without tuning adjustments, with the volumetric efficiency of the engine? Does that change? It sort of goes in that big, big deep wormhole. And I'm not a mechanic nor an engineer, so I don't actually know the answer. I was going to say the same. Look, I'm not a mechanical engineer, nor do I know about airflow or anything else, but it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me to put a pod filter on top of an engine and then try and send air to it when it already had an enclosed system. If you're trying to make noise, then yes, of course. I just... I can't work out how I lost so much power other than what we've been told, which is there's tuned resonant intakes that people have spent millions or billions of dollars on, and maybe they just kind of work. Maybe the limitation is not that, uh, but I would love to know. And if someone from K&N out there also is watching or knows, I would love to know, like, how do, how do I make it work? Because for now, um, I've taken the system off the car and I'm just going back to stock, which is, I think, how the car's gonna have to go to battle. Because the idea is obviously, to make power, to make the car perform better. Yeah, I know some people like the sounds of pod filters. That's not what this is. This is about trying to make the cars go better and it goes worse. Yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly right. So anyway, testing, there it is. Look, uh, there's, there's testing as part of the answer as well. You can test extensively. You can go to the diner. If you've got a diner, you can do this sort of stuff. And in product development, you imagine that's part of it. Yeah. Because you just go test. Let's move it. Let's adjust this. Change the size. Do this. Diner run, diner run, diner run. It's not something we can do with our particular cars. Yeah. So look, it was something a little bit different today, but also I wanted to share those results with you. And also, if someone's got some education on like what it is that if I did something wrong or it wasn't right, or maybe the data's not right, I don't know, but I'm really keen to try and find out. Because so, this is the model yeah. a lot of people are doing. Oh, That's it's one of the things. most common modifications there are. I mean, it's pod filters. And then some people go, well, should you just do a drop-in filter? There's been really good success seen with um, drop-in filters, K&N drop-in filters and stuff in the past. So maybe some things yes, some things no. But certainly in our case, our car on this particular day, uh, it was not good. So I'm keen to find out why, uh, particularly to educate everybody else that's doing the same. There it is. The series will continue as per normal. Next up, we got some... More there's trash. some good stuff coming, people. There's More some trash, driving. there's some weight saving, there's some weight adding. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, we're all moving towards the final battle of the show. And if you do want to support the show, we do make this show independently with the support of a select few sponsors and, of course, your help. And if you go to MightyCarMods.com, we've got loads of merch there. Uh, we would love it if you grabbed something and then we will send it to you anywhere in the world directly to your door. And it directly goes to helping us make this show. So we'd really appreciate it's it. It's new so, stuff that we're making all the time, stuff we're coming up with designs, friends of ours have designed for us. So. Yeah, all custom made and shipped from here to you. Uh, also, the socials, we do, I know we don't talk about this stuff a lot, but there's the Instagrams, there's the Facebooks, there's TikTok, YouTube, YouTube Shorts, and then our second channel, MCM TV 2 where we've been putting up extra videos where any experts that we've had uh, come down, uh, we've been doing some extra videos with them about specific mad nerdy things that might interest you. So you can check those out. We'll link up the second channel uh, below and up there. And we'll see you Good next one. time on more Cash vs Trash.